King Darius, king of the mighty Medes and Persians, needed someone to be the chief ruler in Babylon. He chose Daniel, who he knew to be brave, wise, and honest. The other rulers were angry. They couldn't believe that a foreigner had been chosen over them. They worked out a trap to catch Daniel. Look at this. I hear the king is going to make somebody uh, his second house leader besides him. Sure hope it's one of us. We <coughs> definitely are the smartest rulers in the land. That's right. I mean, you could probably pick Daniel. Just look at him. He's obviously the king's favorite. He isn't even around here. Makes me sick. Yeah. What are we going to do? We can't let Daniel get such an important position in the kingdom. I know. We'll get rid of him. We, let's go to King Darius and get him to make a law that'll make Daniel do something wrong. Good idea, but what kind of law should it be? I know. A law that has something to do with Daniel's God. That's a great idea. Let's go. The Medes and Persians worship the hey. gods. But Daniel worshipped only the God of Israel, the one true God. The jealous rulers knew that Daniel prayed often to his God. So with fast beating hearts, the rulers went to the king. O king, long live forever. What do you guys need to talk to me about? All the rulers have to suggested that you should make a law that for 30 days no one pray to any God or man except to you. And that if anyone disobeys the law... They should be thrown to the lions. Oh, what a nice thing to suggest. My rulers must think I'm a great king if they want this law. Of course, I am a pretty good king. I like this idea. The law should be written down immediately. Farewell. I will write it down. Happily, the rulers watched King Darius write down the law. They knew that once a law of the Medes and Persians was written down, it could never be changed. The law was then told to everyone in the land. Thank you, Great King. Go declare this law to all the people. Attention, everyone. The Great King Darius has made a law that for 30 days you cannot pray or worship any god except to King Darius. If anyone is caught breaking this law, he will be thrown to the lion. As soon as Daniel heard it, he knew it was a trap set for him. He must either give up his daily prayers to God or be thrown to the lions. What am I going to do? I can save my life by not praying to God for 30 days. I could also save my life by just praying secretly in my head, and no one would know. Or I could find a hiding place and just pray there. But that's not what God would want. I have to do the right thing. Daniel went into his house. He went to the front room where he always prayed. He opened the window which faced towards Jerusalem, his own country far away. Daniel prayed to God to help him with this tremendous problem. Daniel did not try and hide his prayer, but prayed just like he had before the new law. Look, Daniel was there, right there in the window. He appears to be praying just like normal. Yes, our plan has worked. Quick, let's go tell the king. King Darius, quit brother. Did you not make a law that said anyone who prayed to any god or man except to you will be thrown to the lions? Yes, I did. You were the ones who suggested that I make such a law. Well, Daniel, as one of the Jews captured from Babylon, has paid no attention to your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. How did this happen? I must find some way to change the law. Daniel's one of my favorite leaders. I must put an end to this law. All day, King Darius tried to find a way to help Daniel, but it was no use. King Darius himself had written the law down, and it could not be changed. King Darius, it is now evening. You must decide what you're going to do about Daniel. You must carry out the law as you wrote it. Indeed, Daniel must be punished. To show others that he broke your law, he must be taken to the lion's den. I have no choice. Daniel's to be brought to the lion's den. Oh, there you go. 
So the king and his officials brought Daniel to the lion's den. The hungry lions pace backwards and forwards, roaring. Daniel waited bravely. The men threw him in. <laughs> Daniel, may the God to whom you are so faithful save you. I sure hope so. Uh -uh, stay back, stay back, stay back. <laughs> ah, stay back. Peace, stay back. Then hardly able to watch. Darius watched as the huge stone was rolled into place over the entrance of the den. Then King Darius had to seal the stone with his own ring so that everyone would know if the stone had been removed in a rescue attempt. Then King Darius went back to the palace. Daniel was frightened by the scary lions because no one had ever survived the night in the lion's den. Daniel, do not be afraid because you have obeyed me and prayed to me. I'll protect you from the lions tonight. Thank you, God. Could not. He tossed and turned all night. He was afraid his good friend, friend Daniel, would be killed by the lions. I cannot sleep for you. I am so worried about Daniel. What have I done? At the first sight of morning, he hurried back to the lion's den. Oh, wake up! Wake up! What? Oh, Daniel. Uh, we need to go see what the lions have done to Daniel. King Darius hurried to the entrance of the lion's den. Daniel, has your God saved you? O oh, king, live forever. My God has saved me from these scary lions. I order you to get Daniel out. How is he still alive? I don't know. It seems impossible. <coughs> The men who had thrown Daniel into the den now lifted him out. Sure enough, he was completely untouched by the lions. After a joyful greeting, King Darius issued another word. You rulers there! You have accused Daniel, and now I accuse you. You shall be thrown into the lion's den. No! So the rulers who tried to trick Daniel and the king were themselves thrown into the lion's den. Oh, we can turn him alive! Even before they touched the floor of the den, the lions sprang on them and tore them to pieces. To all the people in my kingdom, I'm a new law. I command that everyone should respect Daniel's God, for this God is truly great and will last forever. 